Welcome to 30 Minute Online Academy. My name is Joanne Leonard Weary. I am a staging, decorating, and color expert. And our event today is sponsored by uh, the Staging and Design Network, which is located in Kirkland and Everett, uh, Washington. And they have a very interesting concept and it is a shared rental pool so for those of you that offer the staging service you know no matter how much inventory you have you can never seem to have enough so what staging and design network did brilliantly was they allowed individuals to bring their inventory into their warehouse um, and that way you can continue to use your own inventory and supplement it with other people's inventory. And the beauty of it is, if your inventory does not happen to be out in a home, uh, someone else can rent it from you. So you are making money um, <laughs> laying in bed if you want or sitting in your uh, pajamas in a snowstorm. Uh, so it is a brilliant concept. If you have not become a member of SDN, I encourage you to do so. It is only $60 a year and opens up a lot of opportunities, including the ability to buy at um, a designer price, which is slightly over um, wholesale. So it's a great opportunity for you to be able to do uh, that as well. Um, they also offer a number of um, certified and continuing ed classes, and I am blessed to be part of that uh, group. Again, for those of you that don't know me, this is what I've been doing since 1975. Um, I began as a residential designer, um, started staging because I had my real estate license, had never heard the term staging, but I knew that if I made things look better, they were going to sell. And in time, I um, heard about the concept of staging and started my own school, the Decorating and Staging Academy in 1999. Um, so I have been blessed to appear on HGTV, um, ABC, CBS. I'm an author. Um, uh, I've had the opportunity to create a lot of um, uh, and be involved in a lot of things um, over the years. So I just want to make sure I see a couple of you had, had raised hands and I'm going to lower them. But again, if you have any questions as we are going through, feel free to type them in, in your um, Q&A box. And I am just going to open that up for one moment. Okay, to make sure. So today we're going to talk about trend. My goal is to try to give you as much information as I can in 30 minutes, uh, thus the name, 30 Minute Academy. I know you are all busy. Please know that when you are done with this seminar, um, whether you ask questions during or you have questions after, feel free to uh, reach out to me. And you will also receive the recording of this event um, within the next couple of days. It will come from uh, John Bedford at Staging and Design Network. So a trend is simply what's hip or popular at a certain point in time. Uh, it can also be an indicator of what's happening, such as a trend towards warmer temperatures with global warming. But the important thing for you on the call is trends can make rooms and houses feel younger and well maintained. If I walk into a home and I'm still looking at a, a 1985 plaid sofa, then my concern as a potential buyer is that the house is lacking in maintenance as well and has been ignored. So it is important for your customers to understand how trends can impact what they are doing. So in our world, trends are going to uh, in impact color, wall, and finishes. Um, we're going to see trends change in fabrics, the, the motifs and the textures. Uh, we're going to see trends impact the way furniture is uh, shaped, the way that it's styled, 
Um, you know, the days of having matching pillows at the end of the sofa is a passe um, kind of look. Also in the whole functionality of the space where we used to have that TV cabinet, many rooms, many family rooms no longer have televisions anymore because people are using uh, their personal devices to watch TV or YouTube. Um, television watching is not as much a group uh, sport as it once was, and we're tending to become a little more solitary. And um, ultimately, I think that is not as much for the good. But your job is to simply know how the world is using technology, furniture, color, and all of those things to make a home seem appealing. We're also going to see a trend and a change in accessories and lighting. We're going to talk a little bit about all of that today. So who determines this? Well, one of the places it comes from is some of the European trade shows. So what you and I are experiencing um, began as a vision um, across the pond, as they say, um, at one of the many European trade shows that then influences what we are starting to do uh, and use in our own homes. I mean, let's be honest, so much of what we are experiencing in our homes is not built in the USA anymore. So we are influenced by what is happening at European trade shows, um, Asian trade shows, because they are the ones that are making uh, the things that we are probably going to be uh, purchasing uh, at a higher price tag, of course, with the new tariffs coming into place. Um, also, the runway influence, uh, influences our design trends, the color palettes that we're seeing, the fabrics that are used, the tendency to use overabundance of fabrics, long flowing, beautiful things, or a sparser line. And all of them are, are impacted by what's happening in the world. Of course, design liberties, um, in other words, people like Joanna Gaines who can create a huge influence. And this is not something new. Uh, for those of you that are a little older, we can all remember the Ralph Lauren Im impact, the uh, Mario Buati uh, impact, the uh, Rachel Ashwell um, impact. Over the years, people have come online that have had a look that they uh, shared with the world that everyone wanted to jump on that um, bandwagon. And we can go back to the very beginning to Elsie DeWolf and, and the looks that she was creating that met, excuse me, many wanted to mi mimic. Sometimes some of our trends are just created by guys in suits in corner offices. You know, when I walk into a retail store, I think, who did that? You know, someone sitting in a corner store that said, or sitting in a corner office that really has no idea what's happening in the real world will sometimes impact what you and I are seeing out in the marketplace. Excuse me. I sometimes wonder that when I see the colors of the year and think, who really came up with that? And then, of course, the catalog companies. The catalog companies like Pottery Barn, Ballard's, West Elm, Paragold, um, all of those companies, if they don't embrace it, if anthropology doesn't embrace it and Crate and Barrel doesn't embrace it, then it may be a trend that will not go very far at all. So why do the trends change? Well, partially because we as human beings love change. We're, we're kind of fickle. But let's be honest, it's really all about money. If you have bought everything that you love for a home, it's going to last you for the rest of the life. That's the rest of your life. That's not going to do a whole lot for the economy. So again, those powers that be, those suits in the corner offices, they want to come up with ways to help you and I part with our money. And part of that is the way that we impact friends. So here's an example of a room and we've all um, seen this look. This is a Joanna Gaines, her, her famous shiplap. A look using the strong contrast with uh, blacks and whites together. Uh, Joanna Gaines did a great look in embracing uh, the element of contrast in a space. Now, 
it's a look that, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, you'll be able to walk into a house, a new house that comes under the market, and you'll know exactly when that house was decorated and who influenced it. But let's be honest, there are elements of what she has done that all of us can embrace, regardless of your particular style. Uh, I personally like to see something that has a little more... Um, freedom in what on what we're doing and I don't really want to spot a Joanna Gaines room across there I she's so talented I'd love to see her walk down a different path and create a room that would totally surprise me I've always said to my clients um, if someone can tell that Joanne Leonard Weary did your room I didn't do a very good job and yet Joanna Gaines has proved me um, wrong because you can spot her rooms and she's making a whole lot more money than I happen to be. So let's talk about some of the elements, the trend elements that you need to pay attention to. So here is an example of the 2019 colors of the year. Everything from Benjamin Morris Metropolitan, who a very that is a very cool gray, to Sherwin Williams Cavern Clay. Um, in the red orange family. And then we have PPG's Spice of Life. And then you have um, Bear Paint. And um, I think that was PPG's, I, I'm sorry, I think I have them mixed up, um, who've gone down the blue green uh, route and the blue route. Notice even with this blue though, there's a little bit of that green influence in it. And then Pantone's latest uh, that they just announced uh, about a week ago um, is again in that um, coral family. So even the paint companies can't agree what is the color of the year. So what does this tell you? It tells you that you need to pay attention. You need to know where sh you should be going, that these colors maybe will become accents for you. But the bottom line is if you're decorating your own home, look with colors that you love. When you're staging, you need to stay on trend and pay attention to what is being merchandised out there. The one thing that we want to think about a little differently is you and I have the opportunity to see what is cutting edge. Uh, many of you on this call may attend markets each year like Las Vegas market, High Point market, Atlanta, Dallas, um, and you see what, um, the vendors are saying are the looks for this year. Our clients, however, the buyers of the properties that you are trying to sell, are getting most of their information from companies like Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, West Elm, Wayfair. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what your clients or potential clients um, consider on trend because that may feel different from what you consider on trend. So here's an example on the left of Metropolitan, Benjamin Moore's color of the year. And I've partnered it with Benjamin Moore's Revere Pewter. Revere Pewter has been the go-to color in staging for a number of years now. So I did this because I wanted you to see what the difference is. Metropolitan is a very cool based gray. So it is a color that will work fabulous um, if you have white woodwork and you don't have a lot of gray days outdoors. Um, some of you on this call are from the state of Washington. You get a lot of gray days. I happen to be from Erie, Pennsylvania. We are sometimes called dreary Erie for a reason, as beautiful as we are many days. We also get those gray, cool days. I'm looking out the window at one as we speak. So when you are looking at these colors, I want you to think about how do they fit with everything else that we're doing. Metropolitan is not going to work well in a home that has a lot of natural woods or woods that have not uh, been painted. Revere Pewter was a little more forgiving because there was a little more warmth. So if you want to keep riding the gray train, you want to look for grays that have a little more of a beige tone to them as well, or what is being called grays. So think about the other elements in the room. Don't get so hung up on the fact that 
you know, gray is the color of the year that you think any gray will do because it won't. <coughs> black continues to be big. The difference that we are going to see this year is black mixed with caramels and golds. So yes, those caramels, golds, beiges that have been gone for a couple of years are back again. And the combination to make them fresh is mixing them with cool, uh, warm grays, um, like perfect grays from uh, Sherwin-Williams. Or this is uh, Sherwin-Williams tricorn black on the wall. Tricorn black has a gray tone to it. So it's almost a universal black because it will lend itself well to many things. It seems to be equally warm and cool. So as you are looking at your inventory, you want to start br bringing back in some of those warm colors like the caramels and the golds. Blue is still hot. The navy blue mixed with white is a beautiful look and it's really a classic and timeless look. But many of the blues are tending to be a little more denim. Avoid the purple based um, blues, uh, make sure when, if you are looking at blues, that you compare those colors in context. When you pick up an individual color, sometimes you cannot see the other uh, colors that are taking place in there. So you're not as aware of the hue bias or the overtones um, in that color. So look for blues that have a little more of a gray quality uh, to them or these bright blues. This is navel on um, the left side, Sherwin-Williams navel, and it pairs beautifully with the whites. Some of the other trends that we're going to see continuing is, as I said, black will continue, and we're seeing them in the criddle inspired doors and windows that we're seeing everywhere. We're seeing shower stalls made out of these. Um, so although this uh, steel type of uh, window, uh, steel base type of window and or door has been around since 1860, it has a very modern and contemporary feel to it. It's a look that looks great, traditional, um, farmhouse and modern. So it's very open. So this is a look that is not going away. And we're going to see this grid pattern reflected in a lot of wall hangings, uh, mirrors, artwork, uh, because there's something about the cleanliness, the confinement of those grids. It gives a space, a sense of order. The other thing to watch for are backsplashes that have a picture ledge on it. So this is a, a new trend that you're going to be seeing in kitchen design. Um, of course, we're not, uh, we're, we've kind of gone through a trend where we aren't seeing as many upper cabinets. We're seeing open, open shelving. I don't know about you, but from my standpoint, unless I have a wall of storage space, um, no upper cabinets and only working from lowers doesn't really work for everyday living. I don't want to dig back to get my um, pans. So we do need that upper storage. But what we're, we're going to see is more of a trend away from the white cabinetry that we've been living with for quite some time and more dark cabinets again. So you're going to start seeing woods reemerge again, rich, beautiful wood tones, as well as blacks, navies, um, <clears throat> deep greens, uh, caramels, colors that have more full body to them. So when you go look at your staging inventory, if you are seeing a lot of the turquoises and the aquas, it's time to get rid of them. This is going to give your staging a very dated look as you go into 2019. We've lived with it for quite a while. I don't know about you, but my eyes are tired of it. I still love the color, but it does seem that 80% of the staging projects that I look at online, this is the accent color. So it's time to start replacing that color with some of these newer, fresher um, colors. So let's talk a little bit about textiles and motifs and textures. The motif in a textile, a fabric, a wall covering, very much can tell you the um, age of a room. And so we've been looking 
for the last decade, but very clean backdrop walls. Wallpaper was gone. Um, we were just using painted walls, but wallpaper is back. And wallpaper that is very busy, uh, full bodied, a lot of floral to it is very much on trend as well as um, geometrics and cleaner lines. The emergence of the new self-stick wallpapers um, is making wallpaper relevant again because people don't feel like they have to make as much of a commitment. It's easy to put on. More importantly, it's easy to um, remove. So as we look at this wallpaper, we can see it's combining those grays and the blues that are very popular and on trend now. Would you use this in a staging property? No, not in any great level. But wouldn't it be wonderful in the back of a bookcase, perhaps in a powder room? Think of places where you can add that little element of surprise. Um, I recently did a project for a client and we used the black and white buffalo check in her kitchen. And in the back of her china cabinet, I used a, a black and white cheetah print um, just for a little bit of an accent. And what she loved about it was she's loved her painted walls and said, I swore I would never wallpaper again after spending days, weeks, months removing all the wallpaper from this home. But the beauty of the self-stick wallpaper, you pull a corner, you pull it off the wall, no damage, you're ready to move forward with whatever your next look is. So here's a look. We've seen this before. It looks like a house beautiful look. It's on trend again. I personally would have a real hard time living in a room like this. And obviously for staging, we would never want to live in a room like this. But let's take this classic blue and white and let it inspire something that you may do. So this is a room that happens to be done by Joanna Gaines. And there's that classic blue and white with a classic slip covered um, Ikea style, uh, Pottery Barn style sofa. And um, it brings you that freshness of the blue and white, but it still makes the room easy on the eye. The other thing that I want you to pay attention to after years of not using fabric panels at windows um, when we are staging to maximize the light, Consider adding fabric panels again. Um, Ikea has some of the best inexpensive fabric panels done in a basic off-white, and I wish I could think of the name of the one that I um, like so much for staging. Um, but what it does is by adding fabric panels to the room, it adds a sense of verticality, it lifts the eye, and it actually makes the room feel larger. Now, obviously, if you're staging and you have fabric panels, you're going to pull them back to maximize the amount of light that's coming into the room. But take, in it, take into consideration that vertical element of the space because it will make the potential buyer feel like they're getting more bang for their buck. Here are a couple of other, these are new fabrics and we've all probably seen them for me at 66 years old. Uh, I think I've lived this look twice before. Um, so maybe you don't want to use a lot of it, especially if you're staging, but to use these large um, florals on throw pillows, perhaps a table runner, add some interest in using some patterns. The days of solids and tone on tones are kind of tired and predictable. So think about adding some patterns. And don't ever give up on the classic animal prints. To add a touch of animal print to a room, it looks beautiful in a room that even has kind of a lodge feel. The key is to have a light hand with it. I also love this wall of mirrors here. So if you are selling, it's a great way to pop light into a room and uh, bring some energy in the space and, and again, visually expand that space. The other big trend in fabrics right now are the Krypton fabrics. So the Krypton fabrics are very forgiving. They are so staging friendly. Um, and originally uh, developed 
for commercial applications. They are perfect for living in a home um, because they are waterproof, they are stain proof. Uh, they wipe right off, they don't absorb anything. And so from a staging standpoint, they're going to be very forgiving to all of that moving um, back and forth. You can see the sofa in this picture is done in a Krypton um, fabric. Now that fabric done in that off-white, and I'm sure you all have that Ikea style sofa in your inventory that looks sad and tired because it's been handled so many times. Using the Krypton fabrics are going to help you to have a better look and longer lasting inventory. Let's talk a little bit about furniture and style. The big thing in furniture and particularly cocktail tables is rounds. So using something like this half drum is a beautiful look. The open um, legs under there and under both of these pieces make a space feel larger. And the other thing that we're seeing a big trend in is clustering. So it is about functionality, using two rectangular um, tables um, brought together to create a big square. When you are using a sectional sofa in a room, that shape really needs a square or a um, round to kind of alleviate all of that uh, linear aspect of a rectangle. So think about clustering some of your pieces. And when it comes to beds, the trend is more of a platform bed. Dust ruffles are out. Uh, they have been um, leaving slowly, but they are gone. So that's the quickest way that you can date a um, staging property. So here's a couple of uh, new beds featured at the um, High Point um, mar market. So look for something that is clean. Now we can have this very modern appeals to the millennial or something that has a little more sophistication and feels a bit more um, feminine, which is always a great look. We also are seeing less pillows on the bed as you go into 2019 and you're doing your bedding, back off and make your pillows feel a little more casual. This happened to be the front cover on, I think it was uh, Potter, Pottery Barn. And what I want you to see is notice the black walls, the black furniture, and most importantly is this platform style bed. Now, they still have overdone the pillows, but notice those pillows are not lined up all neatly marching in a row. They're more casual and haphazard, like somebody had just, um, laid back and took a quick little relaxation um, moment. So think about what you can do. You want a room to feel almost like someone just left it and not so rigid as we have done in staging past. Let's talk a little bit about accessorizing. So here we have the grid mirrors. These are a very popular look. And again, it's playing off of that same look we looked at earlier. Large florals, portrait art, barns are big and outdoor buildings. And they're great in modern, contemporary, farmhouse and traditional. And um, birds are also a very popular concept. What I'm telling you is we're back to art that actually has subject matter to it. So this is what we've been doing for years. It's time to start thinking of replacing some of the art in your inventory and creating art that actually tells a story. Now, our time with abstract art has been great because it's very easy to put a room together and um, has a broader appeal but it's everywhere, uh, you know, whether you go to big lots or um, a higher end store, you're seeing the abstract art. And once it starts making its way into places like uh, big lots and Walmart, it's time to do something that feels a little more upscale. So start looking at your art and start slowly getting rid of it. Get ready to have a, a spring garage sale. Lighting. The one beauty of lighting right now is metal finishes are broad. You almost really cannot go wrong with metal finishes. Golds are back. 
not shiny brass golds, but uh, finished, more textured, more um, developed golds. Crystal shades or clear shades are still very in, geometric shades. And of course, spheres are also very popular because rounds and curves are a big element of decorating in 2019. I am exactly at 3.30, so 30 minutes goes quickly, and I would love to share more with you, but hopefully that gives you um, some ideas of what to do, what you need to start filtering out of your inventory and adding in, into it. Um, please join the Facebook group uh, for Staging and Design Network so you can be aware of some of the other things. Education is going to be a big part of um, SDN's growth pattern at, in um, 2019, and I'm honored to be a part of that. There's also my own Facebook pages. I am just going to open up and see if anybody has any questions today. And it doesn't seem that you do, but I will wait a few moments. Again, thank you for giving me 30 minutes of your time. I hope I gave you some ideas. I know it was fast and furious, but again, I'll send over the recording so you can look at it at your leisure along with the um, slides. And let's see, uh, Kim Schaff says, thank you. Kim, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And everyone have a great day and um, watch in January. We will be presenting the 30 Minute um, Academy um, on an ongoing basis. So stay tuned for details and watch some of the things that I will be sharing on SDN's Facebook page um, moving forward. Thank you again, everyone. Bye-bye.